what's your take about standards and what do you think about 19650? Yeah, great segue to 19650. I think, of course, they are important to get like a unified way of collaborating. That's what they're, they're all about. So we don't speak like different languages and uh, do all of things differently. So it doesn't work together. So it's all about getting things to, <laughs> to collaboratively working together. So that is what ISO 19650 is, um, is all about. In my view, there are a lot of opinions that says like, no, you can use ISO 19650 and still have all our old contracts. Sure you can, but you won't get the fucking value you want. Yeah, what's the point then? Why, why to use it? Just why to waste time to to learn and uh, yeah, if you if you want to apply. Exactly. Yeah, uh, small-minded uh, mindset is just that, unfortunately. Yeah, and this is... It's this opinion in the industry now that ISO 19650 is this complicated thing we have to do. And it isn't really this complicated. It's all about building or planning a good BIM execution plan and doing BIM according to that BIM execution plan and making the BIM execution plan. It's, it's not that difficult because it's, you do it in three stages. Uh, first, you have to uh, do assessment and need. You have to figure out what you want. You have an organization that has some goals and you have a building that's a tool to reach those goals. So you have to have requirement for that tool, that building. So it sort of uh, helps the organization reach that goal. So that is like the first step is make the right requirements, the information exchange requirements for the project so they so they work in favor of the uh, the company that will use the building and of course you have the trouble with a uh, different owner and operator and uh, you don't know which company is going to operate in your building and and that's a whole that is like uh, that's a big problem <laughs> but you can you can still like um, make generally good information exchange requirements that make sure you get a building that that actually works in the operational phase. So first step is to sort of identify your information requirement. And then you put that out on tender and uh, and you wait for the tender response. And, uh, and the tender response uh, where the market um, responds to your tender, uh, you, you respond by how do you structure your process what people are you using? What kind of competence do you have? And what technology are you using? Process, technology, and people. We are people, we develop technology, and we're working together in the process. So that's what we do. So you answer with, with those three parameters, and also your approach to solving the information uh, requirements. And one thing that people aren't that aware of is that Penn State University has developed 25 BIM goals that you can implement and sort of answer those information requirements with those goals. And they are also structured as process, people, and technology. So it's all of that uh, fits together. And and uh, one of the, maybe the contractor, the total contractor for the project uh, that also uh, uh, is uh, maybe will uh, do collaborative working with the client so that uh, and he also has the engineers um, uh, so so then you have like this approach to the project and what you do in the third phase this is like the tender response and then you make an appointment and what you do it's not called a contract anymore in ISO 19650 it's called an appointment and what you do is in that phase is you quantify the uh, information exchange requirements into task team information delivery plans so you have these different working groups that has different responsibilities and together the different task team information delivery plans becomes the project master information delivery plans and that are structured in like you have decision, uh, different decision points for the clients in this master information delivery plan. And then you can start doing VDC and that's ISO 19650. Okay. So it's not like, so you, you figure out your requirements, you you have someone have an approach to solving those requirements and you make a master information delivery plan according to that. 
and then you do BIM by doing these VDC principles, virtual design and construction. But how does that's ISO asset... 19650? Okay, but how is the asset manager or asset owner starting using 19650? Or uh, it is used today as it is supposed to be. Like, let's take Norway because we we live and work here. Uh, do you feel like uh, most of the asset owners or asset managers are aware about this? Are they willing to do something? De they willing to adopt it and try to start implementing it? No. <laughs> or maybe oh. a little bit. <laughs> so, so easy. <laughs> so so that is like the, the competence on the client side. That is like the, you have to have in Norway, we call it the stiller competence. You have like a better English word for that. Uh, order uh, or uh, procurement, procurement, uh, procurement competence. Yeah, and that's not. It's not on a high level for uh, for uh, in the different uh, companies. So what I'm trying to do, uh, trying to do some like presentations for companies on how to do this. Uh, in our company, we're using um, uh, Tom Gilb's uh, knowledge. He's like this systems engineer guy. He's 80 now. Um, I'm working with his son, Kai. Uh, that sort of like you, you, you start the, you start the um, information requirements phase. Like uh, what, uh, why do you do what you do? And uh, what do you do? And how how well do you do that and how good how well do you wish to do that and within what time frame and and then you have like a, a, a good framework and then you can sort of strategize like uh, what different strategies can we use to achieve these goals and then you can um, score these different strategies based on evidence and then you have like this good model and it's it's all about removing the potential of miscommunication uh, in the project so you can interpret uh, a requirement one way and you can interpret the requirement uh, another way so we have this language this planning language uh, we use to sort of define all concepts and and actually tom gilb's knowledge here has been uh, like uh, fred's ai has really been inspired by his way of thinking Actually, so uh, so Tom Gilb and Kai Gilb is uh, like Kai Gilb is now. He started 10x construction with me, and then he sold his house and bought himself into a founding partner position in Graph Matrix. So um, so he's over there now. So um, yeah. I I hope I won't need to uh, buy a tilt uh, yeah. and rent it to you soon when. Uh... <laughs> when you go well, basically what i'm trying to say is that we we have a product for that that problem we have <laughs> like a really good like this uh this sort of knowledge has been used a lot in the it sector like tom and kai guild they've helped uh, intel they've helped Bosch, they've helped uh the state of india state of uh, uh, america i understand they so if you go to guild.com you have like um a limited amount of really known customers that they have been using and my idea has sort of been to implement this thinking into construction projects and we have this uh, we had this really um uh, really good workshop uh, in this organization called the center for real estate uh, disciplinaries and it worked really well so i think this way of uh, thinking is um it's really good for a construction project just like uh make good requirements for the project instead of try to detail manage everything to the project 